you remember that, uh, that the, I think that the only things which was new for you last week was the, when I introduced you a new way to calculate the vector product, the cross product of the two vectors. So uh, we need a little bit more intuition. So if the, these are two vectors A and the B, so by definition, by definition, the vector cross is the vector which is considered uh, orthogonal to both of them. In mathematics, you know that uh, to have the plane, you need to have just two vectors. So if you have a two vector, you can make a plane. So this vector is perpendicular to this plane made by two vector A and B. So the, the one which I, I teach you was that uh, if you consider this vector as a as a vector in the three-dimensional space, and we call it that uh, the unit vector. So in three-dimensional Euclidean space, Euclidean space, anybody know what the Euclidean means? How you can be sure that a space of the surface is Euclidean? The triangle is 180. Yeah, perfect, exactly. If, if you have an angle, and if you measure the angle of this uh, triangle, and if you find it that alpha plus beta plus gamma is 180 degrees, so you can show that this is a Euclidean triangle. But let me to, to choose a piece of the sphere, for example, and the sphere, so you can make the spherical, spherical triangle, huh? For the spherical triangle, it's no need to have alpha plus beta plus gamma, mm -hmm. under it. For the geometry on the curved spaces is not Euclidean. This is a semi-Euclidean or this is a non-Euclidean geometry. This is a different subject. So we are talking about the Euclidean space and the flat space. There is no any curvature for flat space, so it looks like exactly like the table is a flat flat. So flat in the US, you're exactly what you are thinking about. So this is the vector. So each component of this vector, I, 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 I say that you can find it that each component by this expression. This is a new symbol, I call it this Levi Civita, and I make it the uh, I make it a rule for that, that if the index here are running ordinary, like 1, 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2 is 1. Mm -hmm. And if you just change it two of them, like this, it will be minus. And if you have a repeated index, like it will be 0. This is the object with three index, and it played the very central role in the, our more in the, our future discussions. And this is called a Levi-Civita. Actually, this is a tensor, but I will explain later what the tensor is. So, using that, you can generate, you can find all the rules of the vector analysis. For example, I ask you last time I ask you to. Uh, to derive this equation using this principle. And I don't know you you'll be able to do that, but to to prove that using this notation, you needed to have more information about this epsilon. Mm -hmm. So that was the what I presented before. But today I want to talk about the differential operators. So we pass from the vector analysis differential operators. Vector differential operator. 
Again, some of these uh, topics are not very new for some of you. So, if you have a one variable function, one variable function, like f uh, as a function of x, you have a very good feeling about what does it mean differential of f with respect to x at any point. If this is the curve, so at any point, df dx is give, gives you the slope of the tangent line or on the curve. And this is your note. Tangent theta. If you have a more than two one variable, so in many cases you have a function with more, more than one variable, we call it multivariable multivariable function. We need to replace this definition, this definition of the uh, total derivative or differential by the new object. So we consider a function, we call it the scalar function. By a scalar, we mean that the value of the function is just given by the location of the coordinates. So for this such function, you don't need it to know the direction or any other things like orientation of the surface or something. Mm -hmm. There are many multivariable functions, scalar multivariable functions, which appear in the different subject of the physics. For example, the temperature is a scalar function. Temperature is one scalar function. And the pressure is also pressure in the homogeneous systems is also a scalar function. Potential, electric potential, electric potential is a scalar function. V is V X Y Z. So the total derivative of this function, the total derivative of that, is actually is when you when you make increment to the all the all the argument of the function. So if you have a if you have a this as a surface like a phi x y z so you are fixed at the one point called x, y, z, y, z, and you just make an increment. I mean, you change it the moving from the, you are moving from this point to the, the new point. And the, the change between the coordinates is given by delta x, delta by delta z. So this is the definition of the total derivative. Yes? So, how I can make it, this definition simply? So the way is that I can consider this change first as a change only in the first coordinate of that x. And secondly, I can fix it the first argument and say that this is just a change in the function when you change the y. And the second, you can fix the first two arguments, arguments, we call it this argument and uh, consider just a change in the third argument of the functions. So, the differential of the function finally will be given as the, this expression. And this is already you know from the basic mathematics, this expression. This partial derivatives should be evaluated at the initial point when you started your movement. So far, there is no any trace of the vector. So maybe you are, you are not sure that why I included the differential here in the vector chapter. But it's possible to rewrite this equation using the vector notation. It's possible, I think, about this equation like the vector equations, and you will see that 
how I will do that. So, the only part of this equation which you already know makes sense to you like a vector is dx and dy dz because before you know that the x, y and z are the component of the r the coordinate vectors so this part of differential is given as the component of the sum vectors if, if in the three dimensional space I define the vector x, y, z infinitesimal change in this vector is also is a vector I mean just a, just a move a little piece get delta x, delta y, delta z around the axis so this is the what you know so from the differential one part is actually the vector dr dx, dy, dz The other inspiration to think about the total derivative as the vector equation is that it seems that it looks like some inner product or dot product of the two vectors. One vector can be dr, and then the other vector we call it gradient phi, gradient. Gradient. Sometimes we write this gradient phi in the old textbooks. This is a just a function which if you do the inner product to the dr you will get that. You see that because of the you can consider that as the first component of the this new vector, you can consider that as the second component of the this vector. And this as the third component of the vector, huh? And this vector plays very essential roles in the potential theory. Potential theory is a branch of the mathematical physics which is studying the solution of the Laplace equations. Potential theory can be in the meteorology, you can have potential theory in gravity, even to find the gravity. Gravity means the gravity which you already know in the geophysics, what the gravity. So it can be used for electromagnetism and for different subjects. So this equation, the fundamental equation, they gives you the total derivative or total change in the in the a scalar function. This scalar function can be represented uh, any quantity like temperature, as I write you, electric potential gravity or anything else. So the total derivative is given by the gradient of that dr. Gradient phi, which a vector with the component given by the first derivative of the given function, has some property. Properties. So you see that the first differential operator, vector differential operator, is gradient. So in one side, it plays the rule of derivative, so this is a differential, the normal differential which you learn in calculus. In some other point of the view, that's vector. So it has a three component, actually. So three components, and each component is derivative. So we can call it this vector operator, no? vector differential vector operators. What's the property of the gradient? So gradient is additive. Additive. Gradient of the scalar quantity is zero.
This is the basic property of the gradient. Where we use from the gradient? Where we use? Phi is a scalar function. I told you phi can be represent the potential, any type of the potential for you. And always, always you can find the surface in the space which this function equal to the some constant. For example, if the function is, if this function is x squared plus y squared plus z squared radical, it's always possible to find some region of the space when the function gives you just a number, a constant number. This surface is called equipotential. Equipotential surface. Because phi represents for us the potential, generally it is the potential. So, equipotential surface are very important. Equipotential surface are the surface which the scalar function gives you the just a constant number, mm -hmm. just a constant. The first application of that this equation, the fundamental equation of DFE, is for the equipotential surface. If a surface is equipotential, for example, in this case, the equipotential surface means that just uh, just make equal this radical to some constant, you get this equation, and this is the sphere. Uh, this is the equation for a sphere. So equipotential surface in this case is the, the point on the surface of the one given sphere. Mm? Mm -hmm. Any point on this surface, on the surface of this sphere, gives you the constant phi. So it defined a surface in three dimensions, we call it the equipotential surface. The first application of the total derivative is that if this phi represents an equipotential surface, so the gradient of this will be zero. Huh? When phi is a constant, according to the Second property, when C is a constant, so the gradient of phi will be zero. So for equipotential surface, equipotential, gradient of phi is zero. No, not gradient, sorry. Differential of the phi will be zero because phi is a constant. So let to see that what you find from here, you find gradient phi dot dr zero. So if this is your equipotential surface, if this is the equipotential surface, this is the dr. Huh? You are moving from one point to the other point. This is the dr. This equation tell you that the gradient is the vector perpendicular to that always. always you will get the right angle for the gradient, even if you don't know the form of the vector. So for equipotential surface, which are considered as a very important surface in the potential theory, DFE is zero. So you get that gradient FE should be equal to the DR the equipotential surface. But why I say this, what's the important of that? The important is that, as I told you, phi represents the potential. So if you think about the surface with the fixed electric potential, for example, mm -hmm. this gradient of phi is the direction of electric field. So you can find the direction of electric field just by the property of the equipotential surface. So in, in case of the PV electric potential, so this gradient of field represented for you the electric field. So 
if if gradient if it is perpendicular to that, also minus gradient if it is perpendicular to this surface. Huh? There is no any difference for that. So not only gradient if it, but plus minus of that also will be perpendicular to this surface. Because DFE is zero, so when DFE is zero, there is no any restriction over here, so you can have a plus or minus. What we what we use in the math 